Hello everyone, my name is Omar, and in this video we shall discover some of the basic functions and principles of computer control. This video is aimed towards people who are just starting to use computer control. If you are a veteran of computer control, this may be not the video for you. This video is going to be about the interaction menu of computer control. You can say the most essential part of this program. But, first things first. What is computer control? Well, actually the program is very properly named. It enables users to control their computer. Computer control is a software for controlling a Windows PC with one's eyes. It is developed, and still receiving updates regularly, by the team from Toby Dynavox. As for now, the day that this video was uploaded, it is included with the new iSeries and the PCI 5. That's great, I hear you say, but what can I do with it? Let me tell you, using computer control, you can browse the web, go on social media, write documents, play games and much more. I want to especially mention the radial design of the UI. I personally do like this aspect very much because it reduces stress for worrying that you're going to hit the wrong button, and on top of that it reduces the distance your eyes need to travel. That can be a silly thing to take account of, because your eyes move blazingly fast, but if you work the whole day with an eye tracker, the eye travel time definitely adds up quickly. That's enough general information I believe. Today we're going to explore the interaction menu, as this is the most essential part of computer control. When you are familiar with this menu, you can do most of the mundane activities and tasks with only your eyes with great ease. When you first launch computer control, you'll notice that a faint circle is following your gaze. This circle is called the trace, and with it you select the area you want to interact with first. This is actually a key difference with other interaction software. In previous interaction software, like Windows Control, the user has to select the function first, like left click or double click, and then they could select the area where they want to interact with. In computer control however, the user can select the area where they want to do something, and then select what they want to do. This is what Toby Dynavox calls the interaction first approach, which enables users to have a more natural and stress-free experience. This approach can also be faster than the function first approach especially in an unfamiliar environment, as the user doesn't have to look first where the area they want to interact with is precisely. You may find it annoying or distracting that the trace is continuously visible. Luckily you can change the opacity in the settings menu. To do this, gaze beneath your screen to access the off-screen menu, go to settings, into activation, from there you can adjust the visibility of the trace. As you can see, if you set it to light, the trace becomes barely visible. Additionally, you can pause eye tracking anytime easily, by accessing the off-screen menu and selecting the pause button. This is very useful for when you watch a video, or are reading something. For the purpose of this video I'm setting this to dark so it is easier visible. But when I'm using computer control normally, I set this to light. In the settings menu, in the activation section, there are two other settings I want to mention. First the fixation time, with this setting you can set how long it takes to fixate on an area with the trace, how long you need to focus on a specific point before computer control acknowledges you want to do something on that point. And the second one I want to mention is the dwell time for the buttons, in other words, with this setting you can adjust how long it is going to take a button of computer control to be selected, though this has no effect on the keyboard dwell time. This is a very important setting to know about. In the beginning you want to set this dwell time fairly slow. A slow dwell time on the buttons is going to make it possible to get familiar with the position of everything. And as you get more and more familiar, you can set the dwell time faster, which is going to enable you to do things faster. In the very beginning I had set this on medium, which is around 1 second. Now, a year later, I can use it comfortably at about 350 milliseconds. But for the purpose of this video I will leave this at 600 milliseconds so you can easily follow what I do. When you fixate on a point, you will see that a button has appeared on the side of the trace. This button is called the activator and with it you can access the interaction menu. 
the activator appears always at one of the four places, on which one of these places it is going to appear depends on where you look on screen. It is always facing the center of the screen, as you can see. Knowing this will enable you to go into the interaction menu that much faster, onto the interaction menu. When you fixate on an area you want to interact with and go into the interaction menu, you see a bunch of buttons, this can be overwhelming at the beginning. Luckily there's a handy show guide function on the right side of the screen. This will let you look around the menu, look at the buttons without activating it so you can get familiar with everything. As you use computer control more and more, you will memorize the positions of the buttons and thereafter be much faster. So, it's definitely beneficial to take as much time as needed to explore the UI of computer control. We are now going to go over each button to see what they're for. The first button I want to talk about is the adjust target button. With this button you can, yes you guessed it, adjust the target. After you have focused on an area, computer control sets the target in the middle of the selected area. After you go into the interaction menu, make sure you always check if the target is in the right place to avoid misclicking. If the target is not in the right place, select adjust target. Computer control then enlarges the selected area to make it easier to select it what you want more precisely. Left click, right click and double click are obvious what they do I think, so I won't go into much detail. After you selected an area, went into the interaction menu and made sure your target is correct, you can perform a left click to browse the web for example, you can right click to access the context menu for deleting a file, and similarly, you can double click to open a file, these are just examples, you can do anything what a left, right or double click can do, with the click and drag function you can select text and drag and drop items on the screen, to use this function, first select the area with the trace from where you want to start dragging, after you made sure you're on target, select click and drag. Then, computer control lets you select a destination. Normally you will get the opportunity to adjust your target precisely at the destination. If you are not getting the target adjustment on the destination, you can enable this in the settings menu. To do this, access the off-screen menu by looking beneath your screen. If you use the i-series, you can look directly at the infrared lights of the eye tracker. From the off-screen menu, go to the settings menu, activation, go to the next section and toggle adjust target, click and drag. This will make it much easier to drag and drop things. With click and drag you can not only select text, but you can do other useful things as well. Here are two tricks. Trick number one, Windows has this feature called Window Snap that lets you quickly arrange windows. When you drag a window all the way to the side, windows automatically scale that window in such way that it takes up the half of the screen, and on the other half you can put a second window. This is pretty easy to do with computer control as you can see. Another trick that you can do with click and drag is quickly make shortcuts to your favorite websites. To do this, just drag a link to the desktop or a desired folder. This will make accessing that particular website easier. You can also scroll with computer control of course. To do this, focus on the window on which you want to scroll, and after you made sure your target is in the correct position, which usually is the case as the area is very big, select the scroll function within the interaction menu. You will see that a faint circle has appeared similar to the trace, with the difference that this circle won't follow your gaze. When you look beneath that circle, the page will start scrolling, and how further you look down, how faster the page will scroll. This is the same for all directions. When you look up, you'll scroll up. When you look to the left or to the right, you will scroll to the left or to the right. What I usually do when I read something, is put the scroll circle at one side of the text and begin reading. This way, the page slowly scrolls as I read, which prevents me to going back and forth between menus. The last main function is the keyboard function. Before we talk about the keyboard function though, I want to talk about a very important topic first. Calibration. It is very important to ensure that your calibration is as good as possible to get the best experience while typing, or while using eye tracking in general. If the calibration is not good, the tracking would be off, 
which is very frustrating. So, it's not a bad idea to do it regularly, if it is possible of course. Calibrating is usually the first thing I do when I turn on my device, and it is possible that I do it a couple times throughout the day. Within computer control, you can recalibrate by going into the off-screen menu, and going into calibration. Here you can check if it is calibrated well. You can hit the calibrate button to calibrate. Yes, I know that I probably overused the word calibrate, but it's really important. So calibrate, onto the keyboard function. As you've already guessed let's the keyboard function you type, to use this function, gaze at the area you want to type, go into the interaction menu, and after you made sure your target is in the correct position, gaze on the keyboard button to bring it up. It's useful to know that, when you activate the keyboard function in the activation menu, computer control perform a left click automatically, so you don't have to do it beforehand. It is important to customize the settings to get the best typing experience. Dwell time is a very important setting to figure out what suits the best for you. It is obvious to pick a not too fast dwell time, but if it is too slow, you may think that it is not accurate. When I was just starting to use eye tracking, I'd set this around 500 milliseconds. This can be too fast for some of you, because when I started with eye tracking, I already knew my way around a QWERTY keyboard. So if you have not much experience with the selected keyboard layout, you may want to pick a longer dwell time. After 3 years of using eye tracking intensively, I can comfortable type with a dwell time of 300 milliseconds. It is also possible to let computer control automatically adapt the dwell speed if you enable adaptive dwell speed. So if you enable this setting and type without mistakes, computer control will speed up the dwell speed over time. If you make a lot of mistakes on the other hand, the dwell speed will get gradually slower. Computer control has also word prediction that you can enable or disable in the settings menu. Word prediction is generally used to type faster, as you don't need to spell out words all the way. You can also change the dwell speed of the word prediction button separate from the general keyboard dwell speed. This is crucial, because if you have a fast dwell speed, you don't get time to read the words that are predicted resulting in accidental selection of words. I personally prefer to disable predictions, because I don't feel that I can type faster with predictions enabled. This is probably because I check too regularly if a particular word did show up pulling me out of my rhythm of typing. Do any of you have the same feeling, or do you use predictions a lot? Please let me know in the comments if you wish. Moving on, the keyboard is not docked, meaning that the keyboard could hide what you are typing. So when the text is under the keyboard, you can do this. You can go into the off-screen menu of the keyboard to access a bunch of useful options. One of those options is to move the keyboard up or down, like this. In that off-screen menu, there are other options that could be useful. You can open a scratch pad where you can type. If you have the Isaries, you even can display what you typed in the scratch pad on the partner window. But beware that the content of the scratch pad gets erased when you close it. Other options are for pausing eye tracking, resizing the keyboard and quickly switch over to another keyboard language. The last thing I want to mention about the interaction menu is the three function keys. These can be useful for selecting text, which I already explained in another video where I go in depth on how to select text, you can watch it on my YouTube channel, but these can be useful for other things too. One example is when you want to select multiple files. If you hold control before you click you can select multiple files that are placed anyhow, adjacent, not adjacent, etc. To do this, you focus at the area the file is at, go into the interaction menu, make sure your target is correct, and before you go to click, toggle the control function. You have to toggle the control function each time you select a file. With the shift function you can select multiple files that are in order. I want to select the whole middle row for example. I click on the first file, without toggling shift. That's important. Then I click on the last file, after I toggled shift and everything between those two files is selected. With Alt you can do various things. For example in Photoshop, Alt is used for cloning items with the Move tool. 
In File Explorer, you can create shortcuts if you hold and drag a file while holding Alt. This last one I learned just now when I'm writing this voiceover, which I'm writing after I recorded everything, so that's why there's footage of Photoshop instead of creating shortcuts. And to end this video, I will show you a real life situation where I implement most of the theory we just seen. Thank you to my friend Bradley Hedden for assisting me on this demonstration. So far just typing, nothing exciting. Bradley has a YouTube channel called, All Access Life, where he and Danny posts videos about accessibility in games, vlogs, reviews on adaptive products and much more, so be sure to check All Access Life out. It is a good idea to pause eye tracking, if you don't want to interact with the screen while watching videos or just waiting, you can actually pause while the keyboard is up. I have no clue why I decided to close the keyboard and then put it on pause. You can quickly copy text by selecting it with the click and drag function and then going into the off-screen menu to copy it. You don't have to left click first. When you select the keyboard function, computer control automatically performs a left click. As you can see, just one left click on the address bar selects the whole address. You can paste text by hitting Ctrl V on the keyboard. So, this is the end of the video. I hope that this was an informative video which helped you to know computer control better. If you have any questions or feedback, please don't hesitate to leave a comment or contact me directly. Thanks again to Bradley for assisting me on this little demonstration, and thank you all for watching this video, until next time.